Hello and welcome back to More Time City of the Damned and the Adventures of the Unnamed Dead with me Barden. Now over the last while we've had some issues with some of our missions being corrupted and the same thing happened with our um, update for the mission we just completed but I think I've solved the issue going forward. It seems to have been that I was using an external hard drive to record from my video software and it was maybe tripping out now and again and that would corrupt the video so now I've switched the target for that to be my internal hard drive so we shouldn't see that issue again now also over the last few videos I've been using a new microphone and it's been a struggle to find a decent position for it where it's going to improve our audio so the audio has been kind of up and down over the last maybe four or five videos but I'm going to continue to experiment with the placement of the mic and it is a quality mic so over time the um, quality of our audio should improve. Now let me take you through how our guys have done in the last couple of missions. So let's start with our leader, Wam Bram. Wam Bram in the last mission got 5 XP. He got 1 mental and 1 martial advancement. And together with the mission before, we spent points in strength, alertness and 2 in weapon skill. So we're continuing on the same trend that we have with him in terms of hitting um, more often and hitting a bit harder as well. Kevin got 4 XP. He got 1 physical advancement and 2 skill points. We spent 1 in strength, 1 in intelligence and 1 in weapon skills since the last time you've seen his update. Cliff got exactly the same. He got 4 XP, 1 physical, 2 skill points, and we also advanced him in the same way. 1 strength, 1 intelligent, and 1 weapon skills. So Cliff and Kevin are really are zombie bros, and they do like to do uh, pretty much everything together. Now the increase in the intelligence, we still need 4 more before they can get knowledge more time, uh, but we are making progress to it now, especially seeing as they started with uh, just one intelligence. Axel got 4 XP, he got 1 physical and 2 skill points. We spent 2 in strength and 1 in, I think, alertness. Mammy's boy got 6 XP, 1 mental, 1 physical and 2 skill points. We've put two in toughness, one in alertness, and one in weapon skill. So we are trying to beef him up. As you saw in the last mission, he was very close to being put out of action. But he did pretty well um, when he was being attacked by multiple enemies. And the idea is we want to keep him um, up as long as possible because his poison really does a lot of damage to the enemy and we want to keep that going throughout the fight not just for the maybe the first part of the engagement. Sip got 5 XP, he got 1 mental advancement, we've spent 2 in strength, 1 in toughness, 1 in alertness and 1 in weapon skill so he's becoming a bit of a formidable ghoul and as long as we can actually get him to hit the enemy, he should be doing some good damage for us. Love Bite, as you saw, was put out of action in the last mission. And that's two missions in a row for her. But very luckily for her, it's also two missions in a row where she got a full recovery. So no permanent injury for her. From the mission, she got 5 XP. She advanced to rank 2. She got one mental, one physical, and two skill points, and we've increased her toughness, her alertness, and her weapon skill. So we're trying to build her so that she can actually survive in these missions, because 
with her fear test she's a really good uh, weapon for us to use and again we just need her to make it to the end of the missions next we don't have Nick here because unfortunately Nick wasn't so lucky he ended up dying and because he was only with us for two missions Wam Bram um, has referred to it as the incident with the intern so I don't think Nick will be um, going down in the annals of our warband anytime soon but he is our first death of the series and I'm sure the guys will um, have a toast to him the next time they make camp because we're down a ghoul we've hired on a new guy so he's his name is backstab he's a rank zero because at the time um, when when I picked him we didn't have much much cash so he's gonna try and um, do a bit better than Nick did and maybe survive for at least three missions we've also done our usual admin we paid our people we've uh, sold some stuff in the shop and we also bought some a few bits and pieces to put on the guys which I'm going to show you in a minute we also received our second um, wordstone request and it was for 114 wordstone so let's go have a look at that smugglers den so we were able to fulfill that and we sent it off and as you can see we got the money for that but we also um, decided to send 203 weight of wordstone to cutthroat's den because they were giving us an extra 20 percent when we send wordstone to them and the upside of that is apart from getting a lot of extra cash it also means that the black pit settlement will now give us an extra 50% for any war song we, we sent to them. So at the moment I'm keeping 100 war stone back just in case we have some struggles and we need to we need to use that to make a shipment. But if we do well in the next couple of missions we may very well be sending some war stone the way of the black pit set. So let's have a look at the equipment the guys have. But first of all, I want to show you a skill that we've acquired on Wambram. This skill is called Order and it allows him to target any engaged ally and it immediately, it immediately grants them a free attack against a random valid target. Basically, it means that Wan Bram can make one of our guys swing at an enemy, but we can't choose which enemy. And this may be good in cases where we want to keep Wan Bram maybe out of a fight, but we still can use him to affect the fight by making someone else swing. Or in a case where Wan Bram can't actually make it to the fight, but he has red pills left and again he can contribute by making someone else swing in instead. Now let's have a look at our equipment. So Wan Bram now has um, a blue amulet which increases his max is sorry increases his magic resistance by 10%. We have seen before as well he's got his blue light armor so he's getting a to a point where he's a little bit more likely to stay alive but we've seen before every time we think he's he's getting a bit tanky he almost gets put out of action and it's only really a matter of time before that happens to him I think. Next we have Kavin so he's got um, some blue clothes so his blue clothes give him extra dodge chance we're not gonna put armor on our zombies um, for now because their movement speed is just so bad that you know we, we can't we can't afford to limit them in any way but anytime we do get um, some better clothing or maybe some amulets we're gonna uh, maybe put them on our zombies and 
try and make them a bit tankier without impeding their movement. So Cliff at the moment doesn't have any upgrades. Axel then, we just put one thing on him, so um, that's an amulet and his magic resistance is increased by 5%. In terms of what he can equip um, armor wise it's very restricted so we can't really um, put armor on our ghouls. Mammy's boy then we've given him a helmet and we've also given him some light, light armor so his damage reduction uh, or armor absorption has gone up a fair bit. And again, that's you know ties in with our strategy of trying to keep this guy alive so he can poison everybody um, around him. And it seems it is everybody, not just the enemy. He seems to, to take some perverse joy in poisoning our ghouls as well. Sip then has his blue mace and he's also got a pendant. So the pendant gives him um, 5% better chance to pass all alone fear and terror tests. Love Bite we've given um, a blue helmet to and we've also given her some light armor. So she again is going to be a little bit more tanky. Our new guy Backstab we've also given him an amulet and we're hoping that you know, it's going to help him to reach his goal of staying alive for three missions. And then we're back to the start again. That's all the updates on the guys. Let's have a quick look at the campaign map. So we've got three missions available apart from the story mission. The first is a scavenger. It's normal difficulty, mark for death, and the rewards mean we're not going for that one. Then we have the cash, mark for death, it's hard, and the rewards are average and poor. And finally then we have the Hunter in the Darkness, it's a hard mission, it's a Warstone Rush, and the rewards are average and good. So in terms of difficulty versus reward, this is the mission we're probably going to go for. As you can see, both warbands will be scattered randomly around the area, scared by something. So it is taking a chance, not starting with our warband altogether, but hopefully we can um, respond to, to the challenge better than the enemy do and get our guys together and start picking them off. But that does bring us to the end of this video. If you'd like to be kept up to date when new videos are available, please subscribe. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. If you want to chat, leave a comment below. And I really do hope to see all of you next time. Goodbye.